You're very welcome back. Now, best in show at Crufts is something that has only ever been won by an Irish entrant once, and that was Garfield back in 1991. And his owner, Rav Dunn, is with us today. And congratulations, and we'll chat to you in a moment. We also Sorry. have a vet, Don O'Sullivan. Uh, good to have you as well, Don, nice and many. Yeah. But, Rav, let's, let's talk to you for a second. Congratulations. The only winner at Crufts, best in show, which is the top prize at Crufts, if anyone follows Crufts, because it's, yes, it's a, a huge show. Yes, that's right. That was a long time ago, 1991, and it was the centenary year. So it was a year that if you could choose to win it, it was one of those years that you <laughs> yeah. would choose. Look, Look at, at your dog. You it's are. like a baby yeah. sheep crossed with a St. Bernard. <laughs> yeah. Tell us yeah. about this breed. Oh, yeah. Garfield. Yeah. Well, they're a gun dog. They're used for flushing out game in heavy undercover. Mm -hmm. And they have quite a large fold of skin over the top of their head. So when they're sort of pushing their way through heavy undercover, this comes down over their face to oh, cover like and, protect the gear. and protect yeah. their eyes. Right, and so what breed is that called? That's a clumber spaniel. I've yeah. never heard of yeah. them before. Where, yeah. where did you come across this dog? I first saw the breed in England a long time ago, and then I did a little bit of research about the breed, yeah. and then I thought, yes, that's a breed I would like to have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I made contact with a, a lady in England, Mrs. Furness, mm -hmm. who at the time was regarded as Mrs. Clumber. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to her, and through several phone calls and, and letters back then, there was no emails and yeah. messages on the phone, uh, she contacted me to say that she had a litter of puppies mm -hmm. and that I was welcome to come over and pick a puppy. And you did. Which I did. Yeah. And hence Garfield. And uh, Lovely. Like, what had you in your mind at that stage, didn't you? What, were, you, were you looking at Crofts or were you looking for a pet oh, or what? No, I was looking for a nice companion, mm -hmm. a dog that I could show that perhaps would be suitable for living in the country. You could take for a walk, yeah. whatever. Showing was going to be an extra added bonus. Wow. If he was good enough to show, brilliant. If not, he was going to be our family pet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So both turned out for and us. And he won loads, didn't he, along his... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He actually won Pup of the Year in England, which is almost a pre-runner to Crufts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the following year, he won Best in Show at Crufts. But I never went to Crufts expecting something yeah. like this. You would be hoping that he might win his class, yeah. Or best of breed. And Ralph, when, when you were training in the beginning, did you say, hang on a second, I have something really special here? That's an interesting question because not having a huge amount of knowledge about the breed, I thought he was either excellent, exceptional, or very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, when you'd compare him to other puppies or other puppies that you would see photographs of in the breed, he looked so different. But there were puppies that were winning constantly at shows, yeah. but he looked so different. He was unique, really, wasn't he? He was. Tell yeah. us, as we're chatting to Donald there, um, how long did you have him? He, I had him for 12 and a half years, and I dreaded the day that I would have to lose him yeah. or make a decision. But somewhere or another, he chose that and made that decision himself. Yeah. He just passed away one night in his sleep. You were lucky really. Oh. So I was lucky. Yeah, yes. You were. yes. So then you decided to set up a crematorium for animals. Yes. Obviously Garfield I chose to have him cremated. Yeah. When I told family at home that I was going to do this they were a little bit hesitant. Oh, I had my cat and he, he's on the mantelpiece. Yes. So I, I've had my cat yeah. cremated. So I, I totally get it. Yeah. So this was back in 2000. So cremation at that stage wasn't the most normal thing to do. And so when I did that, I took him to a facility outside Belfast, left him there, went back towards the end of the week for him. But you know, on the drive home, I thought there needs to be, or I would like to be able to provide something mm -hmm. with, that would provide more dignity and more respectful. Mm -hmm. And thought about this on the way home, but didn't do anything about it. Went back for the ashes. The same thoughts were still going around in my mind on the way home. But again, didn't do anything about it. And so when, uh, did you, when did you do something about it then, Ralph? Oh, those thoughts went through my mind yeah, several times. Time. And about six and a half years ago, uh, I felt at that stage, I need to do this now. Yeah. Because it's something that was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. And the longer you leave it, yeah. it was going to be something. You, you I'd have never urns do. here. Yes. And yes. Um, I mean, I got a wooden one. But look at these lovely fancy other yeah. urns. I just think it's wonderful. They can be with you forever. What do you think, Donna? 
Yeah, it's nice. I suppose every situation is different for people, mm. and some people love to have the urns as well too, and it's a lovely keepsake and a memory yeah, as well. It is, and also it's a process. Like when you when you lose when you lose a pet, Ralph, it's it's, it's going to hit yeah. you hard. It's going to hit oh, the whole yeah. family oh, absolutely. hard. Absolutely, it's a grieving. People don't know, people, they don't know they're how not, to grieve. They don't know what to do. Yeah. So that's where I felt that this service that we provide yeah. is families come to us with their pet, have a little bit of time in the quiet room. Yeah come back into reception, we did then discuss what the, their options are mm -hmm. with the ashes and show them the options mm -hmm. and then they can make a, yeah. a Ralph, choice. J just for people at home, uh, mm -hmm. what, what is the service like? Are there prayers there or, is it, or, or how does it work even? No, this, there, are no there aren't prayers, mm -hmm. but if somebody wants to have a private moment mm -hmm. in the quiet room, have prayers themselves, do whatever they want to do, that's between them their family, their pet, yeah. you know, so it's very private, it's very individual, but it's not like a human okay. cremation yeah. service. I want to make that clear. Of course, yes. of course. It's very respectful, yes. very dignified, but families can choose to do whatever they would like to do in the quiet room themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good you, ha you have that service, but Donald, to, of course, people that may have animals who aren't well, whatever, it is a good thing to have the discussion with someone like yourself, with their vet, mm -hmm. and then as you can say, look, Oftentimes there are such wonderful tr uh, treatments now and people like Donal yeah. can keep our animals alive yes. for many, many years longer than we expect. So it's wonderful now that as well. Uh, yeah, it can be really hard to make a decision as well too with that yeah, gradual yeah. deterioration. Sometimes you need to kind of quantify it as well too for yeah. people just to help make that decision. Yeah. Like there's a few um, surveys that we have and you kind of score things on one to five based on are they still mm. eating, are they comfortable, yeah, are they moving around the house well. And it just helps just to kind of have yeah. a figure that you can keep following and help make that decision as well too. Certainly. Right. Don't, thank okay. you very much. Millie is, thank you Millie is well. laughing for much. many years Millie, to come. Thank you as thank well. You. Good to have you guys.